In this video, we'll be working through the question you see on the screen from the 2023 Ordinary Level Maths Leave Insert. I recommend you try the question before watching, and if you get stuck anywhere, feel free to ask for help in the comments. I will do my best to get back to you. Check out my channel for a playlist with all the other questions. This is question one from paper two, and we're gonna be looking at points and um, coordinate geometry all about a line, midpoints, equations of a line, distance, things like that. So to start us off, a, in, in part A, it tells us we have two points, a 4, 2 and B, 1, 8. And they ask us to work out the slope. First thing I always do, um, if they ask you to draw something, do it very carefully. But if they don't ask you, it's often a good idea just to do a little sketch. Uh, four, I come out 4, go up 2. I come out one and I go up eight. Just so I know sort of what I'm looking at. These two points, they ask us about the slope. So I have to put a line in. So what's the slope of this line? Now I'm gonna do uh, a lot of these questions twice. Um, I, I promise I will use the formula here. I'll, I'll use um, m is equal to y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. That's how a lot of you like to do it. But first, I, I'm going to do it a, 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 well, I think a better way, maybe a slightly faster way, but it's certainly more useful for lots of more things. Um, another way to find the slope is to make a triangle. So we have two points here, come straight down and straight across to make a triangle. And remember, this was a one and this was um, four, this was two and this is eight. So um, this triangle, if I draw it again here, the base of it is three across, and the height of it is six, eight minus two, and four minus one. So that's where we get the triangle. And then uh, we can always get the slope of a line um, by getting the difference, the dividing, the height, the, the rise versus the run you often hear, but the height by the, the width. Now, there's just one thing we have to be careful at, First, sorry, a bit of a fly loose in here. Um, first thing is, well, let's just do it first. Uh, six divided by three, and that equals two. So the slope is going to be two. So it's not really, so bear with me for a moment. Because the other thing we need to be careful of is in slopes is, does it go up or down? Um, and we read, like in English, we read left to right. So um, this comes down. This is a slope that's coming down. And if I were to draw one like this, that's going up. That's the first thing to know. Um, and then we can make a rough guess on any picture by going, this is zero, this is um, plus one, and this is plus infinity nearly. Uh, well, it approaches infinity. And this is minus infinity, minus something, minus one, back to zero. That's, that's not really important this part. All we need to know is this is a slope that's going down. It's gonna be a negative. The answer is minus two. And that means one of these numbers is minus. Uh, actually, we'll find out in this part, minus three. It doesn't, it's not actually one of them, but still, that's, that's the answer here. Uh, minus two is the slope between these two points. Now, if you didn't understand any of that, don't worry too much, we'll, we'll do it this way again now. Um, although it is useful to learn this way. Maybe, <laughs> maybe watch a couple of more videos because I don't think I explained it that well. Okay, use this method. Um, First we label all these x1 and y1, That's, we call this the first point, x2 and y2. It would work just as well if this was the first point and this is the second point, doesn't matter. Um, so we put this into a formula, y2 is eight minus y1 is two, divided by uh, x2 is one minus uh, x1 is four. This is six divided by minus three. And that's minus two. The exact same answer we got up here. I have to say, most students rather doing it this way. It's uh, more um, more repeatable. They they find they can do every question no problem. This one you have to think a lot more about, which does does make it easier to get. Uh, well, yeah. Here's how I'd say it. Um, if you want to make sure you get sixty or seventy percent, this is probably the way to do things. Um, by the book learning step by step by step. You will get 70, 80, maybe 90% in nearly all exams. But if you wanna get to 100% in exams, if you wanna move on a level, 
looking at it this way, trying to solve a problem is actually a bit more useful. Anyway, I'll, uh, I'll leave my preaching there. Um, do whichever way you want. Uh, let me move on to part two. I'll, I should fit part two over here. Maybe I'll just rub out this bit. After a quick edit, um, we're on to part two. Part two, they want us to find the distance between A and B, the distance between these two points. Just like um, here, I'm gonna do this question twice. Uh, let's split it in half this way this time. I will use the formula, uh, D is equal, let me take X2 minus X1 squared uh, plus Y2 minus Y1 squared and all of that is in a square root. I will use this, we will get the answer. But first, I'm gonna use this triangle again because really they're asking us for the distance from here to here, from here to here. That's, a, that's just Pythagoras theorem. Pythagoras theorem tells us the long side hypotenuse d squared is equal to the other two sides squared sum and sum together. So six squared plus three squared. Uh, clean this up a bit, d squared is equal 36 plus nine. Uh, d squared is equal 45. D is equal to the square root of 45. And that doesn't go in evenly, so uh, D is equal, I have to check my notes, and uh, they are 6.7, um, something, something. Rounded, I, I, I didn't write down any other rounding off. This is fine, you can leave your answer like this. They didn't ask you to round it off anywhere. So this is perfectly fine. I guess you could also take out, um, turn it into third form, take out, uh, let's see, nine goes into this, square root of nine multiplied by, uh, that'd be five, and that'd be equal to three multiplied by square root of five. Often they actually ask you to put it this way, uh, in third form. Um, any of these answers are fine. Correct, correct, correct. Do it any way you want. Now let's, uh, it's quite short by the way, I wanna point out, using Pythagoras theorem, not using the formula at all, very short. Use the formula, uh, we should get something very similar. Um, X2 is, is one minus four squared. Uh, y2 is eight minus two, and that's squared, square root. This is minus three squared plus six squared, uh, square root, already looking similar, six squared and three squared, six squared, sort of three squared. Um, this is equal, minus three times minus three is still nine. Um, and six squared by Swiss, six squared is 36. This is equal to the square root of 45. So we get the same answer as before. Always get the exact same answer. So feel free to do it either way. Okay, in part B, they give us a new point and a slope, and they ask us to find the equation of a line. This comes up every year, so hopefully you're used to doing it. As always, I'll, I'll do this twice, uh, but the first time I'll do it the, the way you're probably more used to. I'll use the formula y minus y1 is equal to m um, multiplied by x minus x1. And uh, where this is x1, and this is y1, and this guy over here is m. So we just fill this in. y says what it is. We want y in the answer. The equation of a line has a y in it, so we leave y alone. Uh, minus seven is equal to one over three multiplied by x minus minus two. Two minuses make a plus. That should be easy. Uh, in fact, I'll, I'll just save myself some ink and I'll just put in plus two. Okay, I, next I'd like to get rid of this uh, third. I don't like factors like that. Uh, multiply everything by three. Multiply the, the left, the left are two different terms. So three y minus 21, what would I mean multiply by three? The right is only one term, and this is all one big term. So we just have to multiply one thing here, this guy. So a third multiplied by three becomes one, just disappears, x plus two. Um, and that's it, that's the answer, except they wanted us to put the answer in the form of uh, something x, something y plus something equals zero. So um, let's, and we usually like to leave x as positive. So uh, let's just move everything over to the right side. Take three y from everything, T uh, add 21 to everything. 
So we end up with x plus 2 minus 3y plus 21 equals 0. Um, but I might as well write equals 0 this side. It's just how we usually do it. You're not going to lose any marks if you left equals 0 that side. Uh, let's see, so we get 3x uh, minus 3y and 2 plus 21 is 23. That's it. That's the answer. I'll, I'll do that again just because there's another way uh, to do it that some students uh, might, uh, might know. I'll just turn my notes over in case I make a mistake. Um, even in your maths formula book, you'll have this formula, but you'll also have one that looks like this. Y is equal, actually let me just check the letters on this one. Yeah, MX plus C. Different letter, actually it's interesting, different places in the world. I've, I've taught maths in Ireland and in China, and different places in the world use different letters. In China, I seem to remember they use a B, um, and I think uh, an A. Yeah, A and B, and other places use M and A and M and B. Anyway, <laughs> you, you guys don't care about that. Here's another way to do the exact same question. Um, why? We know, we know a number that fits in here, and that's seven. Seven fits in on this line. It fits into this equation. We know a slope that fits in, one third. We know an x that fits in, minus two. Um, and we just don't know the c, that's all. So we can solve this equation. So everything multiplied by three is 21 is equal minus two plus uh, three c. Everything had to, this is two different terms this time. Um, add uh, two to both sides, 23 is equal to three c or c is equal to 23 over 3. That's what c is, and I just start again. I go back to here. This time, I'm not going to fill in x and y. I'm not going to fill these numbers for x and y. I'm just going to say y is equal 1 over 3, x uh, plus 23 over 3. And that would be the final answer a lot of times. This is a perfectly good way to write an equation of a line. In fact, I would say this is the best way to write an equation of a line, better than this. But the exam asked for it to look like this. So again, multiply everything by three to get rid of these trees. We'll get three y is equal to x plus 23. Move everybody over to the right. I like to keep x as a positive. So x minus three y uh, plus 23 equals zero. I'll just write it here, equals zero. Same answer, same answer both ways. Personally, I'd rather this way. Most students rather this way, so I have to show you that way. Okay, let me rub this out and we'll do part C. Okay, in part C, they give us this drawing here, and they ask us to draw a line on this um, on this graph, and they tell us it's going to go through this point four two, 
and it's going to have a slope of 2. Now, um, in your exam, you're going to want to use a ruler for this. You're going to want to be fairly neat. On my whiteboard, it's a little all. Forgive me for it being a bit uh, messy because one, I don't have a large ruler, and two, these are not spaced correctly. But other than that, I'll, I'll show you the, the rough way to do this question. And it's actually going to be very similar to what I did in part A, which again is the advantage of not using the formulas, but using triangles and thinking about how the slope works. It helps you answer the harder questions, the part C questions. So how do we do um, a slope two? First of all, remember what a slope looks like? Zero, one, a bit above here. So something like that, and that's positive going up like this. So I already know it's gonna look roughly, well, I won't draw it in. I'll make a mess of my board. It's gonna roughly go like this. So that's the first thing. It gives you a good idea then. Because later, if you get an answer that looks like this, you're like, oh, I must have done something wrong. Okay, so how do you get a slope to? A slope, here's the best way to think of it, the slope. If I move right one, so if I go right one, I go up the slope. So right one, up two. So if I go to five, um, so this is we're on two, uh, four two. If I go from four to five, I go two to four. So here's a point here five four. Let me um, let me put that in actually five uh, four. And this guy was uh, four two. And uh, that gives us a, a line. You get a ruler, put it between uh, these two guys here. Now I didn't have to use five four. Instead of going right. And up, I could have gone left and down. Left one, down two, would have got three zero. I, instead of going right one and up two, I could have gone right two and up four, would have got me at the, I guess, six, six up here. And so on, there's, um, once, once the ratio is two, for every one you go right, you have to go up two. Or every one you go left, you have to go down two. That, that's how you do it, that's, that's it. That's all there is to it. The second part, um, I, it's just slightly off my screen, so forgive me if this is wrong, but the second part is again, you want to draw a line, but instead of the slope, uh, we'll put m equals two here. Uh, we want the slope m is equal minus two over three. So how do we draw that? The same thing, if we go right one, we went up two. Here, if we go right one, we go down two thirds, because down because the minus tells us to go down. And again, before we start, it's a good idea to think, what does minus two thirds look like? Here's zero, and we're gonna go, um, instead of going up, we're gonna go down this time. There's down one, less than one, two thirds is less than one. Well, I guess it's more than one, minus two thirds. Um, so it's gonna be something like this. It's gonna look something like that. So if we go right one, we have to go down a certain amount. That's how much. So you could do that. You could go right one to five and down two thirds to get to um, 1.33. So I, let me put that in. It's not how, what I would do right now though, but you could do five and uh, 1.33333. That's, you're gonna get full marks in your exam if you did that. It's not what I would do. You could also go right at two and down four thirds, twice this, twice this number, four thirds. You could do that, it's not what I would do. Um, you could also go right three and go down six thirds. And the advantage of uh, six thirds, minus six over three, that's, equal, that's a whole number now, minus two. So if I go right three, one, two, three, down two, I get to here. And, uh, Something like that, a bit of a wobble there. Um, and it would still go through this point I drawn. Any of those points would work. You'd get full marks, but honestly, the easiest one would have been right three, down two. And that's another way to read this. Right three, down two. Right one, up two, because it's a plus, plus. That's another way to read the slopes. Um, and again, like all the way back to part A, Instead of using the formula, understanding how the slopes work is what you're going to need to get full marks in a lot of the exams. Okay, I hope that was helpful. Um, if you have any follow-up questions, 
please put them in the comments below. I'll do my best to get back to you. Um, thanks for watching. Have a great day.